Shoreline Publishing presents the inaugural Independent Australian Author Symposium 2020. Saturday, November 14 at the Victoria Park Golf Club, Hurston, Queensland. This unique one-day event gives you the chance to mingle with the community of authors and writers and public figures from around Australia. Be quick and get your seat at shorelinepublishing.com.au. Simon from Brisbane Audiobook Production. Very happy this morning to be chatting with one of the other guest authors attending, JD Murphy. How are you today, JD? Good morning. Thank you. Very good. Excellent. So, you're an Aussie author based in Queensland. You've had a lifelong attraction to storytelling. Your stories range from youthful family entertainment skits through to turning life into story as art to understand your adult purpose. Your first novel, above all created to entertain readers but you really hope that they will be open to the tale that you've crafted within tell us about your first novel the arbor girls how did it begin uh the arbor girls sweet memories <laughs> distant memories i'm working on my second and third novels now oh. so the arbor girls um at a point in time there was an outfit called the ancestry.com opened up for uh, public access and more importantly free access for australians to look at the service records of their uh, relatives so my paternal grandfather served in world war one and world war two but there was not a whole lot of family knowledge about it because of um, those sorts of things were kept secret at the times so anyway i was able to access the service record and from that point on i understood that uh, the reason he was like withdrawn etc after the war was that he was simply experiencing ptsd in oh. 2020 terms uh, so that was interesting um next part of it is that my uh, grandparents when they came out settled in the glasshouse mountains so they were right in the middle very near um, the foot of uh, uh, mount Biwa. so after that it was uh, somewhere to go after i uh, finished work about six years ago i thought i've got to do something with my life and it was time to consider being a writer I enrolled in a Queensland Writer Centre short course on how to become a famous novelist and uh, <laughs> I did the writing part. I did the enrolling part and now I'm trying to do the famous bit. <laughs> You're getting there, mate. Yeah. So anyway, out of all that, I thought I've got to weave a story. So I looked at this business that I was most familiar with, which is the research I've done with my family's, uh, my, my grandfather's service record. And I thought there's got to be something I can put together here to make a tale that uh, brought me from World War One right up to 1960 which is where the heroine of my book um stops her story for the moment sounds very intriguing uh, and world war one and world war two what an absolute legend your grandfather was so um why did you decide to write the novel yeah it's called that creative drive i know that sounds very ugh, but it is i i just like i had to do it i just had to do it I've always been pretty good at English and, uh, you know, as I alluded to, storytelling. So I just thought I'll see if I can stitch 100,000 words together and see if what comes out the other end is a, is a readable product. And uh, according to Brad from Shoreline Publishing, it is. That's awesome. Awesome to hear. I've spoken to quite a few authors that say, you know, the story kind of just came to me and I just started writing it down. Is that how it happened for you? It is, yeah. I was very much a pantser for the first book. There wasn't a whole lot of planning going on. It was uh, organic in another way, is another way of explaining it. Yeah. So I just sat out and I thought, well, I've got to start with, um, as is always said, the, heart, the first page is the hardest one to write. So I thought, okay, just put down a sentence. And uh, I have no idea why, it's just that creative thing. I, I, the idea of being in Bristol in the, in the First World War popped into my head. Why am I in Bristol? I mean, I've never <laughs> been to the place. And it's just like, okay, sleep on it. And uh, next day I woke up and there was Maeve. M-A-E-V-E, -E, and she was a nurse standing on a bombed out street in Bristol. And that's where the story started. Wow. So when did you actually, no, when did you start writing it? Oh, I think it was happening whilst I was doing the QWC course, but you know, I was like, hmm, can I or can't I? And I got to the end of it and I thought, okay, let's go for broke. So I went for broke and then I uh, was reading a QWC magazine at one stage and uh, Brad again from uh Trollman publishing and put an ad in there saying hello do you have a book let me read it so i sent a bit down and he said mm, good send me the rest and i said what do you think and he says let's publish so i thought why not that's very exciting i bet you were thinking oh that is so cool having your work published not many people get that far when they start writing 
Um, so you obviously love historical fiction, but do you write in any other genres? I do, I do. I'm such a creative little thing. Um, <laughs> the second book I'm, is coming towards publication, Brad is doing the editing now, is, um, is about a female police detective in contemporary Brisbane who uh, has all hell break loose and she's got to work her way through it to come from being a, a standard police detective through to someone who has achieved a lot. And if I say any more, I'll, I'll give away the plot. So the promo has got to come yet. The third one in the list is basically set in somewhere between Australia and, uh, sorry, America and Bali. So I've got a context set around uh, mythology and fantasy for that one. Okay, so how do you do your research? Is it places you've been, people you've met and that? Yes, it? yes. It, starts, it starts with places I've been because uh, if I go back to the first book, I spent a lot of time in the Glasshouse Mountains as a, as a child and I was unknowingly absorbing the mythology associated mm. with the mountains as per uh, First Nations mythology. And it's like, I read it later as an adult, I go, yep, that makes sense. And uh, as wacky as it sounds, I, I feel like I've been some places and I've felt things that I haven't felt anywhere else. So mm. go chew on that one. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Bali, I've been to Bali once and I thought, well, I initially thought what a tragedy this place is because of all the, you know, the wayward partying by a lot of people. I thought there's got to be a story here. So I found a, my wife and I found a taxi driver who could actually take us through some of the, the less uh, touristy places. And it's like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I really love all this stuff. So I, I drilled right down into the, the history going back to uh, 700 AD, I think it was, of, wow. of uh, Bali and uh, produced myself a timeline and weaved in a fantasy for this uh, American guy from, it has to be from Hollywood. So They sound very contrasting books indeed, JD. Mm. How long do you write for? Do you write every day? How many hours? Uh, no, I'm, I'm a sort of a burst writer. I've got... Uh, a wife, a house, and two cats that need attention. So uh, I can't, I can't be one of these closeted types. Gotcha. <laughs> you got a life outside of writing and your stories. Yes. Are you visualising the story in in your head when you're writing it? Yes, Just absolutely. Yeah, but I am definitely a visual person. So you've got the Hollywood movies going on in your head while you're writing. Yes, cool. the uh, the set is there, and I'm looking at the furniture in the room and. I think mm, the script that go, comes out of this guy's mouth is going to match the condition of the time. So I go, oh, okay. So I put in a bit about the, the stuff in the room and then it's like I, I write to that to that mm. scene. That's a good little insight. Thank you. All right. So you've got two in the making. You're currently getting one public or edited to be on its way to publish, but your latest, The Arbor Girls. Who did you write the book for and why? Uh, I wrote it for me. <laughs> did you? <laughs> Just to prove that I could write the book. But then uh, it was it was sort of a homage to my grandparents' um, unpleasant livelihood, I suppose, as being uh, well, the grandfather was a victim of PTSD, in my conclusion, and my poor old grandmother had to tag along because she was the goodly wife. Mm, would have been a hard life for her as well. Oh, dreadful. Some yeah. of the stories my father told me were just like, ah, yuck. Mm. Well, you're attending the inaugural Shoreline Independent Australian Authors Symposium on November 14, so I'm sure people can go up and have a chat with you. Maybe you can shed a bit of light on those stories, but people can um, definitely have a chat with you. What are you looking forward to about the symposium? Oh, I actually am quite looking forward to talking to people who might be interested in my work. It's, um, again, it sounds a bit cliche, but it's actually a sharing experience that I would enjoy. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Um, and you're obviously going to have a copy of the book or a few that you can sell up there. A couple of thousand. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Well, hopefully COVID permitting, if the numbers stay down, it'll all go ahead. And with any luck, Melbourne will be um, yeah, way down and the borders will be open so we can have quite a good crowd happening at the Victoria Park Golf Club on the 14th of November. So where can people find out more about you, JD? Ah, I have a website. I can repeat it from memory and hopefully it's right. So it's www.jdmurphyauthor, all together, jdmurphyauthor.com.au. And there's a, a bit of a bio and some cover pictures and a little video that's a, a teaser for the book. Mm, okay, well, that sounds excellent. So jdmurphyauthor.com.au. Correct. Well, I am looking forward to catching up with you and talking more at the symposium at the Victoria Park Golf Club on November 14. So I look forward to seeing you very much there, JD. And thank you so much for chatting with me today. My pleasure. Thanks. Bye-bye.